InDesign CS5 brings a lot of interactivity with it, and this is one of the coolest new things that's coming near to InDesign, because now it cannot just do print design and everything that's involved in making a good design for print, but it can also take that print design and build upon it a little bit and making it interactive to be able to put up on the web. In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can make a little what I call a showcase gallery using the new object states inside of InDesign CS5. So what I'm going to start out by doing is placing a few images that I'd like to use. So I'm going to hit Command D to go and get into my place, that's Control D on the PC. I'm going to select a few photos that I have here, which I used to demo the HDR Pro in Photoshop CS5. I'm going to click Open, and when they open, I'm going to go ahead and pull them in here to my document. And I'm going to make a fairly good size here, let's do, I'd like, actually, let's do it like this. So I'm going to drag out a fair bit here, and then I'm going to click the up button on my keyboard, which is going to add a split here. So I have four images, so I'm going to add, press up and then right, and it's going to split this in to a grid of four. All right, so here I have my grid of four. It's going to lay it out for me very nicely. And I'm going to just hit the top button here, which says fill frame proportionally to fill the frame with the photo. And if I want, I can just slightly reposition the images here using the quick wheel now, also in CS5, and just reposition them. So here I have steps from the overexposed through to the underexposed. Now I'm going to go ahead and select these all. And I'm going to go into my window. I'm going to come down to Object and Layout and Align. And I'm going to align these objects to the horizontal centers as well as the vertical centers to have them on top of each other. And while they are all selected still, I'm going to make all of their frames a bit larger here. Let's do it like this. And again, hit Fill Frame Proportionally. All right, so I have this right up open here, and I'm gonna turn this into an object state. So again, I need to make sure I have everything selected apart from my my title here. So let's make sure I have everything selected. Go into my object states, which is a new panel. So if you don't have it open, go to window, and you'll find it under interactive object states. You can also find it automatically open by default by using the interactive workspace which I'm using right now. Right, so clicking the new button at the bottom, it's going to convert this into an object state. And you'll see it gets a little dotted line here as an outline selection. We have a state 1, a state 2, a state 3, and state 4 on this. So let's name the object state as preview or HDR preview. Right, so with them all in order, you can drag around to reposition if you'd like. I'm happy with the order they are in. I'm going to minimize this. Because so far, so all good. We have our states, but so far we just have the top one showing all the time. So what I need is a good way to navigate through these. I'm just going to simply create a nice little button here. So I'm going to use my polygon tool and make just make sure number of sides are set to three in the settings by double clicking. I can drag out a little polygon here, holding down my shift key if I want to make sure it's going to scale here like this. When I drag it out, make it the size I want roughly. And let's flip the colors around here so it's got a black fill. I'm just going to rotate this around, holding down my shift key to make it a bit faster. It's going to snap to a 45 degree increment or 15 degrees increments. And I'm going to position this where I want it here on this line. I'm going to drag a duplicate off to the side just here on the other side and holding down my shift key again. It's going to jump in 45 degree increments and I'm going to rotate it around so it points each at their own sides. So we're getting there, but right now these buttons don't do anything. So we have to open up the buttons, also be able to find it in the window interactive them buttons. I'm going to select the first one here, and I'm going to add a new action here to this, which is going to say, Swift only, 
So this is where you have to decide if this is going to be a Swift file, Flash file, or a PDF file, or things that worked in both. So for Swift only, we're going to have it go to the next state for the forward facing button. And I'm going to select here and I'm going to make sure it's going to go to the previous state. And it's automatically selecting the object HR preview because it's the first one we have. We have an option to have it stop at the first state. You can only go from state one to four and then back again without uh, being able to go around in an infinite loop. So I'm going to tick that for both of them actually. And once this is done, we can preview what we've made. We can do that by opening up the preview panel again, window interactive, and we have preview. And I advise you to scale up the preview panel quite a bit. So you can see what you're doing. And now that we're playing the preview here, you can see what we have. We have HDR Pro and Photoshop, the text is all there, the images here, and we have two buttons that when I click on them, it goes forward. And now I can only go from first to last, and then I need to go previous to go back. So all this I made inside of InDesign, and I'm able to export this and put it on the web and by just exporting it as a Swift file. So let's wrap it up by doing just that. So file, export, and we're gonna select as a Swift file, flash pay player, SWF. I'm gonna export it out of my desktop, and I'm just gonna call that gallery.swf. Click save, and it's gonna get the export Swift. I can choose to include, I'm gonna deselect interactive page curl, and then I'm gonna leave all of these settings intact. Click OK, and it's going to render out. It's going to open in Safari, which is my default browser. It's going to open up the HTML file that it generates alongside of it. And here we have it, the full-sized HDR Pro in Photoshop CS5. It's a flash file, and we're able to go back and forth. And remember, all we did is just selecting a couple of buttons in InDesign, and we didn't even have to touch flash CS5 in order to do any of this right on the web from InDesign.